in this video we're going to talk about uh, balance of payments and so to do that we need to make sure we understand the difference between balance of trade and balance of payment so let's look at balance of trade first so we can see the difference a balance of trade is what we've been looking at all semester so far especially when we talk in terms of GDP uh, consumer spending investment spending government spending net exports and net exports is exports minus the imports and so we've talked about things like the trade surplus the trade deficit um, trade surplus you're simply exporting more than you're importing trade deficit or having a trade gap means you're importing more than you're exporting uh, again United States is an example of a country that has a trade deficit here you can see uh, that how the trade deficit for the United States has grown uh, particularly over the last decade or so um, but even from about 1975 on uh, we've been operating under a trade deficit now again operating simply under a trade deficit rather than having a trade surplus not necessarily a bad thing there are plenty of countries who have struggling economies who are operating a trade surplus plenty of countries like the United States whose economy is doing very well who operate a trade deficit so it's not always a correlation between those two um, one thing that we see especially with a country like the United States that's operating a trade deficit is typically that's a sign that they're not um, very dependent or their economy is not very dependent on manufacturing of goods um, you tend to see countries that operate a trade deficit that have industries that are based more around service um, and providing those services than simply manufacture of of goods and so that's one characteristic that we see with a lot of countries that operate a trade deficit and so that's what we've been dealing with so far but trade um, balance of trade and, and looking at trade deficit trade surplus uh, by strictly looking at the goods and services not always the most complete picture and so that's where balance of payment comes in it's going to be a much more broad measure of international trade it's going to include a lot more things than simply looking at the goods and services going back and forth across borders now like with a lot of our economic measures um, we're going to look at our balance of payment within a given year um, one different thing from GDP and a lot of the statistics we've talked about is we're always going to measure it in a given country's currency so United States would always be obviously be in dollars Germany however would be their balance of payment would be measured in euros or Japan would be measured in yen now there are two components to our balance of payments um, our current account and our capital account we'll look at each of these individually but one thing that I want you to keep in mind as we go through is that our current account will balance with our capital account So let's look at our current account first current account is going to be made up of three primary parts the first one is what we've been looking at primarily all year again just the trade of the goods and services and what we we looked at under just the balance of trade so that's going to fall under our current account but there are two other categories investment income and net transfers that fall under our current account um, section as well investment income we're looking at money that's earned from those factors of production um, including payments to foreign investors so again when we looked at Japanese car producers um, in the United States the money going back to Japan would be an example of investment income that transfers money that flows from um, private or the public sector from one country to another uh, it could be donations it could be aid official assistance um, think of money donated to Haiti after their earthquake from the United States and other countries it's money that's going from one country to another one thing we see with our current account is that these goods and services or the the money involved are always traveling across borders so it's starting in one country and ending up in another country so that's going to be key um, for you to try to differentiate between is it going to fall under our current account or is it going to fall under capital account 
So let's look at our capital account. And more recently, um, they've started calling it the financial account. So be on the lookout for either uh, terminology. I want to make you aware of both. Um, this is a, a good example of how different textbooks use different terms. Um, and the AP test seems to be settling on uh, financial accounts, even though our textbook uses capital accounts. Now, the capital accounts is going to measure the purchases and the sale of final assets abroad. So again, this, these are things um, that are purchased, but they stay in the foreign country. So again, with current accounts, we are moving things from one country to another. Capital or financial accounts, we're buying something in another country with the intention of leaving it there. So let's look at some examples. If a U.S. company purchases a, a hotel in Russia, well, obviously they're intending to leave that hotel in Russia. The U.S. company is owning an asset in another country. A Korean company sells a factory in Ohio. Factory will remain in the United States, but that money will from the, that sale will go back to uh, Korea. Uh, stocks are another good example. Um, the stock stays in the country where the, the stock exchange is in, even if somebody else owns it. So if I want to own stock in the Japanese stock exchange, well, I am leaving that asset, that stock, in Japan. I cannot remove it and bring the, those stock shares um, out of the Japanese market and put them in the New York Stock Exchange. Another good example, um, a lot of the malls in the area are Westfield Malls. Well, that's an Australian company that owns malls within the United States. Again, another example that would go under our capital or financial account. So let's practice a little bit and then we'll go through some other examples to see, um, to show you how they could be current or capital account. So the first example we'll look at, if the U.S. income increases relative to other countries, does the balance of payment move towards a deficit or a surplus? All right. The first thing that we see is because our income has increased, it's now going to be relatively cheaper to import goods. So Americans are going to import more, which means that our net exports decrease. All right, if we import more than we export, then our net exports would actually go down and be a negative number. That means that our current account balance would decrease and move towards a deficit. So let's look at another one. If the U.S. dollar depreciates, means the dollar is weaker, and we'll get into more of that when we introduce our foreign exchange graph. So if the U.S. dollar is weaker relative to other countries, does the balance of payment move towards a deficit or surplus? So let's walk through that one again. If one country's currency is weaker, then that means it's essentially cheaper relative to that other country to buy those products. And so the U.S. exports would become more desirable because relative to the home country, um, they're going to be cheaper. When a country's currency depreciates, they export more. So in this example, America would export more, meaning our net exports would increase. And so again, our current account uh, balance decreases and moves towards a surplus. Sorry, that should say increases. Current account balance increases and moves towards a surplus. Now, let's do some practice with figuring out is it going to fall under the current or the capital account category. So again, we'll go through each of these examples. And I'll put all of them up first, and then we'll walk through um, all seven of these to make sure you, you have the correct answer. Um, so what I would do at this point in the video, uh, you've got the seven examples up. You can hit pause to see if you can figure out if it's capital or current account, um, and then you can start to play again. And I'll go through what the, the correct answers are. Okay, so hopefully uh, you did hit pause and you, know, you 
try these seven on your own to see kind of how you did. And so let's go through what the, the correct answers would be for each of these examples. So for number one, Bill and American invest $20 million in a ski resort in Canada. This would be an example of capital account uh, because that money will stay or that ski resort will stay in Canada. Number two, a Korean company sells vests to the U.S. military. That would be an example of current account because it's a trade of goods and services. Three, a uh, U.S. company Boeing sells 20 747s to France. And again, that's an example of current account, a trade of goods or services. Four, a Chinese company buys a shopping mall in San Diego. That would be an example of a capital account. Again, that mall is going to stay in San Diego. It's not going to cross borders, so it would fall under our capital account. Five, an illegal immigrant sends a portion of his earnings to his family. That would be current account. Um, that would be net transfer of money. Six, a German investor buys $50,000 of U.S. Treasury bonds. That would be an example of a capital account. Um, it's purchasing a, a financial asset, so similar to stocks. Those treasury bonds essentially you can think stay in the United States. Um, and so the, the German investor is making an investment that stays in the other country. And then the last one, an Italian tour spends $5 million in the U.S., while an American tour spends $8 million in Italy. Um, this is uh, an example of net transfer. Um, so Italian spending money in the U.S. or American spending money in Italy. This would fall under our current account. Now the other thing, if you notice at the top, it asked would this be a credit or a debit for the United States? Meaning credit, would it be a positive um, or debit, would it be negative towards the United States' balance of payment account? So I'll run through those real quick. Um, one would be a debit because the money is leaving. Um, two would be a debit. Three would be a credit. Four would be a credit. Five would be a debit to the U.S. account. Six would be a credit. And seven would be a debit. So for those, you're looking um, which way is the money actually flowing or which way are the goods flowing into the United States or out of the United States. So hopefully these kind of examples uh, give you a little bit clearer picture. We'll practice some more in class. And then we'll add in the, the foreign exchange component, which kind of completes the, the circle and, and helps us fully understand uh, what we're actually looking at with balance of payment, particularly with when currencies fluctuate, what impact that has on our current account in particular. So thanks for tuning in. Until next time.